Today at Arctic, we're handling a screen printing job for Powwow. Here, Cody is aligning the screens on the automatic screen printing machine and setting it up for printing. Precision is key to ensure the print is perfectly centered. We apply controlled color to the shirt, eating to strokes of paint. Then, after flash curing and taping, we apply the second color to check alignment. Our goal is to ensure both us and our clients are satisfied. After adjustments, we are finally ready for a test print. The shirt is dried and carefully examined by Mike for size and color accuracy. Once approved, we are ready to begin the job. So now that the screens are all aligned, and we put the inks in the screens, we're ready to load up the pallets. Before we load on the shirts, we make sure the pallet is clean and lightly glued because we don't want the fabric to move between colors. Now that everything is ready, the screens are aligned, the ink is in the screen, we can start loading the shirts. We actually, we don't have to, but we're actually using a laser guide to make it easier to load the shirts always at the same location. So they're consistent. So we don't have one show that's here. The print is uh, too high or too low. Um, we keep it centered. The nice thing about these automatic machines is when you're printing manual, you're printing one color at a time and moving the, the machine. Here, all the heads are coming down at the same time. So when the blank shirt comes here, it prints the red screen. And the red screen has both solid red and some half tone. You can see a bit of half tone that makes it look lighter. Half tone just means those little dots. And be careful because it's moving. So then, once it prints the red, at this point it's only two color. But we're going to follow the machine all the way around and see it print the second color. As you can see, the the shirt is glued, so it's very tight and clean. And the next color will be registered. So we go all the way around, and with this machine, you can print many colors. So now we're printing, if you can see here, we're printing the black, and that will go on top of the red. And you'll see the, at this point, we're doing two strokes. And now you have the completed shirt with the black, the red, the half tones all together. One thing about the screen printing is a lot of detail. Even the way we pull the shirts, if, if we pull them too much, the image will get distorted, especially around an image like this. We end up with an oval. 
for the way he's doing, uh, Michael's doing it, he's lifting it to unglue it, and then he's pulling it out. Again, experience, little detail. So one reason we put the, the inks closest to the operators, they can keep an eye on it. So they can see the red is running out of ink, or there's a little fluff in the black, and they can immediately reach and fix it. That's why we do it. Sometimes when we print a six color, we only see the problem when it gets here and we have to go to that head and clean it. These are called the different heads. So before we begin, we actually put a, a fresh piece of sticky paper and on top of it, we spread some glue. So you can see it's, it's slightly glued. Think of it as a giant, giant post-it note. And then once we put the shirt on, you can see how nice and glued it is. I can pick up here, but here it's getting sticky. Again, I'm lifting to unglue. And then another thing to watch out for is you want to lay the shirt flat. Because if, if it's, laid, let's say it's really bunch, then this can burn on the, on the heaters. I also like to, not everybody does it, I like to tuck the sleeves in. If somebody's cashing the shirts another end, uh, it can get really hot so they can pick it by the sleeves. Another detail of screen printing, especially when you do larger orders, we're putting all the shirts in, in a, we're stacking them face down. And you'll see that it's designed to make it easy for Cody to grab the shirt and kind of turn it over and load it. Load it like that. Kind of like putting on a sock right in the middle, pull back, and done. The other thing we're using here is once we, once we put the red ink, we're actually using a flash cure that lightly heats the ink and dries it. We don't have to really use it on a um, two color and white shirt, but since we have it, it just makes the screen clear. But since we have it, it makes the print cleaner. When we're checking if the, if the ink is dry, we never spread, we kind of do this, to make sure. So even if it was wet, I wouldn't ruin the shirt. This obviously is dry. Another detail is before we begin actually printing on the automatic, because these are metal pallets, when I began we used wooden pallets, because these are metal pallets, they will run several rounds just to heat the pallets. Because even though the heat's coming from above, the fact that the pallets are hot means that we gradually reduce the temperature here and it keeps the consistent drying of the ink. Like if they'll go for lunch, when they come back, They'll run a few rounds with no shirts just to warm up the pallets. Really, printing on white shirts is, is, is one of the easiest screen printing jobs. Usually when we print on dark, there's more va variables. But with these, with these machines, we can really control the pressure, how much pressure we put on the ink. We also decide if we want to do one stroke or two strokes. So if it's really high detail, like you see the red is just doing one stroke because it's got the half tone. If we do too many strokes, the half tones will start bleeding to each other and fill in. The black doesn't have that detail, so we can do two hits. We don't even have to, just to make sure the print is nice and solid black. Even stacking the shirts, um, we pile them all up. It's interesting, the shirts, well, maybe it's not so interesting, but the shirts come in dozens. Like when we buy a box, it's got six dozen, which is 72 shirts. But years ago, a friend that was printing with me said, why are you counting in dozens? Tens are so much easier. So when we actually pack the shirts, we pack them in bundles of 10. So uh, when we're counting the shirts, even, uh, so we count just to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lucky me. So then we take the whole bundle. I'm not the neatest guy in the, in the group. We put the sleeves in and pile like this. And then I actually have this thing of doing. This way I know this is a complete 10 and this is the leftover of that size. And then this is the next step. So that's how we pack. And this really comes into play when you're doing a thousand shirts or 5,000 shirts and you get stacks and stacks and you want to quickly count and you know how many go in the box. We usually put seven piles in the box. That's just another way we manage the print job. So I was going to ask Cody something. 
So he was gone. He said, okay, I'll unload while I ask you. How was it setting up this job? Fairly simple. Two color prints. So uh, <laughs> Easy? Not much to do, yeah. Especially since it's black on that on black on a light color, even if the black is overlapping, you can't tell. So even if the registration is slightly off, it's still yeah. a Right, because the black, what we call it, it traps the other color. Um, I want to, for a moment, what do you think about the design itself? For me? Yeah. I love it. Something to do with Native Americans, I love it. Nice. <laughs> From a graphic point of view, I find that this is a really good shoe. So first of all, I got to be aware right now that the black printed, but it's not been through the dryer. So if I mess with it, it's actually going to be wet. But as far as the graphics, it's a really good use of the shirt as a color. It's not just a solid block. So even though it's two color, by using half tones and using the white of the shirt, it looks like more colors. It's also light when you wear it, like if you playing sports, it's not like a heavy layer of plastisol on you. It's not like a heavy layer of ink of you, on you. And I find this, this um, design is very tasteful and delicate and beautiful. It's really like a really good design. So Cody. Oh, bonjour from Cody from Arctic. <laughs> Bum up here, get one in. What's that? Say that again. Have a great day. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, fun. Not much to use, Well, unlike the other machines that uh, we've been over before, uh, this one's a little bit different. It's a lot older, and you can do uh, some pretty interesting things with it. Say, if I hit print finish, and I don't want to print on this plate, I can skip this plate entirely, and then as soon as I hit unprint finish. That plate will go all the way around without being printed or dried, and I can just load a shirt on. So say if uh, there was something wrong with it, like uh, not enough glue and we have no time to re-glue it as we're running, I can just take this off. Oh, excuse me. Now I'll load this plate up. As you can see, this one's blank. That means it's not reading as there's a, a shirt. So when I print, this one will stay blank all the way through, and it won't be printed on. It's printed. Oh, this was a shirt that I just loaded. What? This was a shirt that I just loaded. Oh, I see. The one that's blank is the one that I left. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to catch you over there at the design. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do some pretty amazing things with this. But what else? What else? Well, unfortunately, um, you have to control every flash manually. So yeah. if I'm running and I can't really stop, it makes it kind of a hindrance. See, I can raise it as much as I want, but if I adjust that one, the rest are still what I had them preset for. Right. So like say if I have a small print over there and there's a large one over here, I could just set the flash for a really low time. It'll dry it and no risk of burning the garment. It, it just It's pretty helpful, but it's hard to get used to. Yeah. Yeah, these are heads. So right now I just have select all because I'm doing two two strokes on every one. But you can go and you can adjust every head individually. Except for the ones that have flashes. Those ones you can't even activate. Yeah, they don't really. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's okay. yeah. Sounds good. One of the issues we have is we want to dry the ink, but we don't want to scorch the shirt. Especially with white shirts, if we put too much heat on them, they kind of turn yellowish and, and brittle. And so one way of checking, now I'm putting the, the gun right on the ink. And I see it's 352. Plastic salt cures at about 320 to 330 um, Fahrenheit. This is a infrared heat that binds the plastic salt together, but it must reach a certain temperature for a certain amount of time to actually bond. When you, if, if you have a shirt at home that it's kind of cracking, it may even look cool. It just means that it was not cured properly. Because when a shirt's cured properly, it always stays the same. 